Why do you watch auto racing? For me, it goes back to the old adage of man and machine. The relationship between driver and car is at the center of it all. But what happens when you try to hold a race while removing one side of the equation? Well, we have our answer. In recent years, events like the Abu Dhabi Autonomous Racing League and the Indy Autonomous Challenge have shown us what racing might look like when AI finally conquers us all. Spoiler alert, there's some good, a lot of bad, and tons of silliness. So let's start with how it works. Generally speaking, I'm not super technical, but the main gist of it is that they take a Dallara single-seater and mount the CPU in the driver's seat. For the Abu Dhabi events, they use a Japanese Super Formula car, and for the events in the US, they use cars from Indy Next, formerly known as Indy Lights. The cars are outfitted with LiDAR and GPS systems to essentially create a 3D scan of the racetrack so that the cars know where to go, or that they know where they should be going. Because as we have seen during these events, having real-time GPS and LiDAR data being fed into the machine is still far from perfect. The recent race in Abu Dhabi showed that. The good thing about these challenges is that most of the teams that make up the participation are from colleges and universities, basically one big research project. Having college kids working on projects like this is a good way for the next generation of automotive engineers or software engineers to figure stuff out. But if we're going to go down this road of autonomous racing, in my opinion, it should be used to really push boundaries. However, clearly the tech just isn't there yet. Remember the Red Bull X2010 from Gran Turismo 5? What if they made that real? No human could withstand the G-forces in a corner, but an AI driver could. I think something like that would be a fun use of the technology even if it is a bit unnecessary. Racing has always been a testing ground for innovation, and when the drivers are lines of code, the limits should get even wilder. By letting a robot take the wheel, engineers can explore extremes without risking a human driver's spine or their sense of dignity. But outside of that, I think there are a lot of negatives about the current trajectory of AI use in wider society, and autonomous racing only highlights that fact. Artificial intelligence has made some impressive leaps in recent years, giving us everything from helpful home assistants to algorithms that know exactly what we want to buy before we do. But when it comes to AI self-driving race cars, the idea is not really progress, it's more like a science experiment that nobody really asks for. I think it would be best if the effort is spent on maximizing how this technology works on the road and in traffic rather than on the racetrack. But again, most of these entries come from engineering teams at universities, so I don't want to dismiss their efforts entirely. In reality, getting these cars to work is a monumental task in its own right. While the concept of a fully autonomous racing series might sound flashy, it comes with more negatives than positives. For starters, AI race cars take the most important ingredient out of motorsport, humans. This is really at the heart of people's hesitancy to embrace AI on a broader scale. Removing the human element of creativity and passion from anything is something that could have dire consequences. The drama of racing has always relied on the bravery, skill, and occasionally questionable choices of real-life drivers. Watching a computer trundle around a racetrack simply doesn't tug at the heartstrings. There's no underdog stories, no comeback drives, no arguments or disagreements. With AI behind the wheel, all that emotion is just replaced with code. Beyond that, autonomous racing turns competition into a battle of whose tech budget is bigger. Instead of training new drivers, teams would be busy training algorithms, tweaking neural networks, and arguing over whose data set is the best. Like anything, the companies that hire the best people and spend the most money are going to succeed, and the ones who don't will be out of business very quickly. Obviously, in motorsports, there will be front-running teams, and there will be back markers. But by removing the human factor, you remove the variation in performance. Safety concerns also sneak into the picture, even without humans in the driver's seat. AI systems make decisions very quickly, but they also can become very confused in unpredictable situations. A gust of wind, a misread sensor, or a glitch could cause an autonomous car to behave in extremely odd ways. We've seen this time and again in these autonomous challenges. If one of these cars encounters something that it wasn't anticipating, the whole thing goes haywire. I understand that this technology is still in its infancy, so we'll just have to wait and see how it progresses over time. I'm sure people who are watching this or commenting down below might not want it to see it progress. AI can be a very polarizing subject, considering what it is now capable of, and the exponential growth its use has seen throughout society at large. Using racing as a testing ground has always been a hallmark of the automotive industry, and self-driving vehicles are no exception. 
But the problem is, if a self-driving car struggles to go around these wide, smooth, modern F1 tracks without hitting everything, how can we expect the technology to work in real life? That's the issue of priorities. AI researchers already have their hands full trying to get self-driving cars to behave safely on normal roads, without mistaking a plastic bag for a small tornado. Pouring valuable time and resources into teaching a robot how to take a corner at 150 miles an hour might not be the best use of talent, time, or money. That's why it's a good thing that most of the autonomous racing challenges have been composed of engineering teams from colleges. It gives them a real-world opportunity to apply their studies. Another thing I noticed was how much coverage the recent autonomous race at Abu Dhabi received in major motorsport publications and social media. It just seemed totally inauthentic and the whole thing was clearly a marketing campaign. Then it hit me that the UAE government runs the whole series. So in any case, it definitely worked because it piqued my interest and I am now making this video. So I took the bait, hook, line, and sinker. The main takeaway from all this might be that removing the man from the machine makes it no longer auto racing. Motorsport is as much about the community and the personalities as it is about the cars themselves. Fans today cheer for drivers, not computers. They come for the excitement, the tension, the moments where a real person does something incredible or does something incredibly dumb. Replace drivers with AI and suddenly you're watching machines trying to outsmart each other with math. Yeah, it's impressive, but it's not exactly the stuff of heart-pounding action. In the end, AI self-driving race cars might be a technological novelty, but they risk stripping racing of the unpredictability, humanity, and downright silliness that make it great. Without drivers, the sport becomes a cold, calculated contest between algorithms and bank accounts. So while autonomous race cars might be good for bragging rights, they're probably not a good idea for the future if we want motorsport to stay exciting, emotional, and above all, fun. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.